se asi uvedu sám. <laughs> Tak jo. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I would like to introduce you our regular speaker, uh, who is creator, founder of Freeland, probably the only Freeland in the world, <laughs> Liberland. Welcome. Thank you very much, Pavel. And uh, I would say this, this, this Congress is somehow special because unlike years before, when I hear all these lectures and uh, Radim, for example, that was a great speech, it, I'm always, or smuggler, I always almost hear like they're talking about what we're doing in a way and they're giving us the kind of a preparation or ideologi ideological background. And of course, Liberland, if you were here for the previous lecture, is a we are working, work in progress on alternative legal system. Liberland, we were basically portrayed as the, the, the best tax haven in the world uh, by, the, by the mainstream media, and they constantly portrayed us as such. But the idea of, of Liberland is it's much broader. We really want to make a, a heaven rather than haven, if you can d distinguish the difference between these two words. Uh, I don't want people to hide in Liberland, uh, neither criminals or, or black money or, or any kind of shadow economy. I would really like people to come there and enjoy as much freedom as possible. When we founded Liberland, we knew that the voluntarism is something that has to be introduced into the relation between the citizen and the state. A, a completely uh, open relation in which you can again opt in and opt out uh, out of the relation. And that we need more competition between existing states in order to build a freer planet. That, that nothing actually a part of competition works. If there was not a Monaco on the borders of France, you would see taxes probably a couple percent higher. If there was no Liechtenstein in Switzerland, uh, we might see a, a taxes in Switzerland much higher. And of course, if there was no Switzerland in the EU, we would probably see much bigger tax hell in the EU itself. So we were reasoning like that, and we were thinking, why don't we have more freer places like these small uh, small republics or small monarchies that are making possible for you to enjoy a rather free environment. And why don't we go to the extreme that we really turn the relation from an obligatory relation from the social contract into a completely voluntary interaction between a citizen and the state. So we founded Liberland on 13th of April 2015 and that was a special day because it was 272nd birthday of Thomas Jefferson. And we wanted to pay tribute to the founders of the United States, that they, they did a, a great job in defining uh, what the government should do. And uh, let me just read this quote, a wise man and frugal government, uh, which shall restrain men from injuring one another, which shall leave them otherwise free to regulate their own pursuits of industry and improvement, and shall not take from mouth of labor the bread it has earned. Of course, the government should be minimal as possible. Uh, we decided to limit the liberal government to take care only of justice, security and diplomacy, and nothing, nothing a part of that. We have decided to take the best elements out of the US Constitution and incorporate them in our Constitution. And the work is still in progress. You can read the last draft of, of liberal Constitution. Now there is a, a nice new addition to it, which was actually done in cooperation with some people 
uh, here close to Parallelny Polis. Uh, I've got a couple copies here, and if you would like to be part of that inner team, uh, it's going to be soon on GitHub, GitHub as well. And we are trying to base a system on property rights in which the property rights are, are the key, uh, key element from which all other logics in, into the, in the Constitution are stemming from. So we've got a system of republics. That's something that was proven for, for now, let's say, 250 years as a very good system of, of running uh, the state. Uh, but we know that it decays over the time. We've got elements of democracy in which basically half of citizen can veto any kind of decision. And we are putting into the elements of the, of the meritocracy, so meaning that li liberal landers are also the shareholders of the state that they are living in. Meaning the more taxes you pay in liberal land, the bigger is your say. And we are putting it on top of the centralized autonomous organization which means we are partnering with the best uh, companies out there that are working on this right now with DAO stack uh, to put the whole governance model on blockchain. If you want, uh, of course, to read more about this, Liberland Publishing has recently published a, a, an open source government book one, The End, The Fall of the Political Class. It's a trilogy and it gives uh, what we are doing a, a deeper, uh, psych, uh, deeper uh, insight. But what do you need to have a country? And I bet many of you guys actually were thinking about starting a country. And, and when we started Liberland, we were looking into what are those elements uh, that are necessary to start it. You need a population. You need a defined territory. You need a government and a capacity to enter into relations with other states. Let me show you how much Liberland is fulfilling these criteria by now. And by the way, if you want to read more about it, you can read the Chicago Journal of International Law. There is a 35-page study, a completely neutral study done, done by this very prestigious institution. Now, we've got half million and 50,000 people that registered on our website. We consider these people e-residents of Liberland, and we will soon issue them the e-residency cards. We've got 205,000 eligible applications, and that is growing quite fast these days. I think it's like three to 500 people a day. We've got 1,017 people that indicated that they want to start a business in Liberland, and that would already make us a nice powerhouse in terms of business incorporation. We've got defined territory. Uh, that piece of land was unclaimed for more than 26 years when we claimed it by any foreign government, and we are still the only entity that claim it. Despite Croatia now telling us, you know, we are not completely happy with your existence, uh, we are still not having a direct dispute with any sovereign state. And Serbia, on the other hand, was very nice to us. They told us, we don't mind creation of Liberland, it was not formed on our territory, and, and that aspect was kind of indirect recognition. We've got an, an amazing amount of, of professionals that, that apply for citizenship. If you look into the database, the amount of lawyers and, and experts in different fields is great. But I think the strongest uh, community that was developed so far are architects. And they got together when Liberland started and they said, we're going to make a competition, uh, how Liberland should look like. And uh, Zaha Hadid, I'm, I think, Many of you might know them. It's one of the most famous architectural studios in the world, organized that competition. And we had some 70 architectural studios that applied to be part of that competition. And we had very nice results how Liberland could be developed. That was a proposal uh, by a team from Harvard University, for example, which really took in consideration the local ecosystem and how the place could be developed. I think it's a little bit overpopulated, but if you consider that we've got half million people that would like to live there, this is probably only 120,000. Uh, this is a similar density like Monaco, so it would be quite hard to fit, fit it there. If, if everybody would like to live, uh, that applied for citizenship so far, would, would be living in there, uh, we would be three times more overpopulated than the most overpopulated place on planet, which is Macau, by the way. This is how it would look in our cadastre maps. And by the way, Liberland is still the only country that uh, has cadastre maps for this territory. And we've got some very nice futuristic proposals as well. Uh, interestingly enough, this, this concept was based on, on these capsules. 
Uh, and uh, right after I f found this, uh, or I, I saw this, I, I found out that there is a company in Slovakia that actually produces them. And funnily enough, our, our former representative uh, to Slovakia became the marketing manager of that company. Uh, and apparently, we're more and more going into that kind of eco-friendly direction. We've got government. Uh, that's the picture from this summer when we all met in Liberland. Uh, we've got the Minister of Finance, Emperor Grabek, Thomas Walls, Bogi Wozniak, Vice President. And we've got some really strong supporters in Croatia, which I think is, of course, most important for us. Uh, when Liberland started, there was this party called Zit, uh, headed by Ivan Pernar. And at the time, they had 4 or 5% in, in the parliament. Uh, but right now, they've got almost 15 And it's great that they are with us, that they are fully supportive of what we are doing. And without them, of course, our struggle for full sovereignty and for, for recognition by the rest of the world uh, would be much more dim. But I'm happy that he's not just supporter, he is also a uh, liberal and diplomat in Croatia parliament that he has uh, struggled to explain to the rest of Croatia in parliament already a couple of times and explain them all the benefits that Liberland could have. And of course, Liberland, uh, because of the nature of this border dispute between Serbia and Croatia, is the best solution for Croatia as well. Liberland's creation is actually in line with Croatia's claims for the territory. And we also are looking forward, and uh, Kleros is one of our key partners for decentralized justice system. It's basically a system in which first three randomly selected jurors make some decision. If you appeal, then six randomly selected jurors. Uh, if you appeal, then 12. And everything is running on blockchain, on Ethereum. And I'm happy that they're willing to partner with us uh, to build it. We've got a work group now, and we've got a meeting with them in, I think, three weeks from now. And I hope we will push the cooperation forward, and there will be a first pilot early, early next year. We've got another key partner, and you might have heard about DAOStack. Uh, those are the guys that are, I would say, on the top of creation of DAOs. Uh, Liberland itself will be running as a DAO. Uh, when this technology matures a bit, our first pilot should start in one month and a half. Uh, and it is a uh, I would say the key cornerstone of building a trust between Liberland citizens and the government. So everybody will be able to vote using our platform and there will be basically two things. You're a citizen plus you're a shareholder and these two things will combine the weight of your vote. And we have this merit system and that was there from very beginning. And everybody talks here when you speak these experts that there is some need for collateral. And how merit system will work, it is not just your share in Liberland, but it's also your collateral in the justice system that you are in. So if you manage to do something wrong uh, in, in Liberland, then you, according to the law, you, you reject to compensate for the damage that you have created, your merits are at stake. <laughs> you stake your merits to, to become citizen and to, uh, to vote in Liberland, but also well, it is your collateral in the justice system that we are creating. But of course, you know, those are some of the important aspects of Liberland, but you can have a real country unless you have an, a beer and airline. And that's something which was created in an extraordinary way right from the beginning of Liberland. And let me just give you a little bit of update. Uh, Liberland Brewery has now expanded into Serbia. It's, it's brewed also as Liber beer by the Dogma. So it's kind of a flying brewery. And uh, when I was two weeks ago in Novi Sad for this uh, Hackers Congress, I, I, Again, uh, the, we found it in the first pub that we went to. So it, it is well distributed in Serbia. You can also buy it here in Prague in a number of places. And of course, it is available in Liberland. We've got our Liberland, which is growing. And I'm kind of excited about their idea to offer a search engine for both commercial flights and private flights. And that we've got ever growing number of, of Liberlanders that, of course, become quite rich in many cases by investing in, in early days into crypto. Now they're buying their private jets. And it's nice that they formed association and they are helping Liberland to, to grow by helping us to travel around. We've got Pavel Karpišek uh, here, uh, who is the CEO of Liberland Jobs. 
Uh, it's one of the companies that is pushing for usage of crypto for payments for, for work. Uh, so it is one of the portal where you're expected to find somebody who will work for crypto there. And it was recently launched and I think there it's already quite nicely used. So if you're looking for a job or you would like to advertise some job, of course, come to, come to Liberland, uh, Liberland Jobs. You can incorporate your company now easily. It just takes a couple of days now, uh, probably two or three. Uh, we are doing a proper check on the background of people that are incorporating Liberland company, so that's why it takes a little bit longer. We're going to have a nice set of, of e-residency cards, and I can tell you that in, in January we will open an office also here in Prague, uh, where it will take just a couple of minutes uh, to get your e-residency card and, and to get your background check, and it will be right in the center uh, of Prague. But Liberland, of course, is, is about this piece of land, but not just about it. It is a, a wider idea. It has attracted so many thousands of people. It's unbelievable. And they are spread all around the world. So right now, we've got representative offices in more than 100 countries around the globe. And uh, we've got also villages, and the diaspora villages. It has started at the beginning of this year. They're popping up one after another. Uh, and you can see that we've got two places in Indonesia, uh, one place in Somalia, one small settlement starting in Russia, a bigger village in Norway, in Portugal, uh, in Belize, in Panama, in Mexico. And uh, I'm kind of excited about it because it is a, a nice sign that Liberlanders are actually a living nation which is getting together no matter where they are on the planet and they're building something great. We're working hard on diplomatic relations with other countries. I just came back from the United States, from US Congress. I was invited uh, to speak at the ALEC conference, which is the, actually one of the biggest meeting of, of legislators, state legislators, congressmen, and senators. Uh, I met a lot of congressmen, a lot of senators. Of course, many of them are, let's say, liberty-leaning, but also a couple democratic senators that are very favorable to what we are doing. Uh, so I'm kind of excited that uh, I think we, w we have now actively eight uh, U.S. congressmen supporting Liberland. And we hold a very nice reception, I think it was just a week ago, in Trump Hotel uh, for these legislators. Uh, I think we had like seven of them actually coming there and some very, very nice guys that, that are helping us uh, to get Liberland recognized in the United States. I was already on official state visit to Palestine. Uh, just for a short meeting, uh, as you can see, we exchanged the, the flags with the minister. Uh, it was very interesting. They actually received the first ether. Uh, Palestinian government got one uh, as a sign of, of goodwill. And we got recognized by Somaliland last year, which is, I think, extraordinary uh, achievement for us in this early stage. We signed a bilateral agreement about about uh, cooperation in different fields. Uh, we are going to bring them the latest technology for registration of land on blockchain, the latest uh, technology for registration of identities on blockchain. And we are also building a small village there. Uh, and I'm actually heading there directly from here. On Monday, I'm flying to Dubai, and from Dubai, I'm flying to Somaliland uh, to uh, continue that cooperation. And if some of you didn't know where Somaliland is, which uh, I think at some point of the time there was much more publicity for Liberland than for Somaliland. It is, it is, this is Somalia, or Puntland, and this is Somaliland. And unlike Somalia, actually, this is a very safe place to live in. Uh, it is, uh, unlike Somalia, it was colonized by British, not by Italians. But somehow the rest of the world still rejects to fully recognize it as a state. Uh, which is interesting because they've got all elements of statehood for more than 26 years. As long as Liberland is unclaimed, these guys actually are running uh, their country in a, in a very nice way. That's our embassy there. If somebody wanted to join us for the trip, it's going to be exciting. We've got some eight uh, big, bigger names uh, to help them in, in different spheres, but also some investors. Uh, so I'm ho hoping that we will open, open this on next Saturday. This is our village in Panama. Uh, it's uh, called uh, Agro Agrorismo. 
I think it's one of the greatest places to live in, actually, with super climate. And of course, uh, let's say Panama is a great competitor to Liberland. So no wonder that Liberland Village was created there. It, uh, it, it, I think it's, it will be a vibrant community. Now they just started to sell plots, and it's affordable. I think $250,000, including a house there. There is Liberstadt, which, of course, is a completely different jurisdiction. Not that nice one as in Panama. Uh, but it's in the middle of Norway, uh, also a very nice intentional community done by Liberlanders. And it was only launched like two months after Liberland itself was launched. And I'm more than happy that these guys are supporting Liberland and that most of them are, of course, Liberlanders. And then there are projects around Liberland. And uh, I think you're the first guys to hear that we are going to have a lot of fun in Liberland next year. There will be a festival in August, in the middle of August. Uh, our work name for it is Floating Man. Uh, but I think it's going to be a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of interesting events, because what is happening right now, this is when you come to Liberland, uh, we basically take you uh, as close as we can to Liberland without inflicting conflict with, with Croatia. Sometimes people get to visit Liberland right now, sometimes not. But we already have a nice boat there uh, that can host like 60 people for events. We are improving it now to Bitcoin Freedom. That's going to be parked right in front of Liberland. It should be 650 meters of space, kind of alternative space for, you know, for really people to come and enjoy and then bring their friends, maybe make some weddings in Liberland. But also that all the groups that are connected to Liberland, like Liberland lawyers, Liberland architects, uh, Liberland uh, volleyball players or soccer players, uh, they will finally have a place to go and, and uh, visit Liberland and socialize. And their main task, actually beginning 13th of April this year, will be to organize a major festival uh, in Liberland in summer. So I hope I will be able to see some of you there. It's actually it's going to be able to host some 30 people uh, for to stay permanently. Uh, there is a restaurant here, upper terrace, and upper deck. Uh, also, you know, this is not a, a state, fully state-run project. It's a private-public partnership in which I would really like to remove the, the public part uh, in, uh, at all uh, to get rid of it and just make it a private business, one of the physical first private businesses to be located in Liberland. And also, we've got a nice project for houseboats. So, you know, settlement is, of course, one of the key elements where we have still some things to do. Uh, so. Right now, I think there are five investors into these houseboats, so there will be a, another place for 50 people during the summer where they can stay and enjoy, enjoy the time on Danube. That's the important part about settlement, but of course, the IT part is one of the most important. That's why we are organizing or co-organizing a hackathon on 8th of November, which should be a major event where all the IT guys and all the programmers should get together and, and uh, finalize the, the IT solution for Liberland. So I, th I hope that the, the pilot for the DAO will be working, that the first uh, decentralized resolution mechanism will be in place. And if you have a time, of course, you're welcome to join us on 8th of November in Israel. So as I told you, 13th of April, Liberland anniversary, 13th of August, Liberland festival. And I uh, hope to see you there. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks a lot, Veet, for your interesting presentation. Questions? Thank you for the presentation. I would like to ask, uh, what's your ideas about if some other countries start to claim the land or by force? I mean, do you have some strategies or what might happen and what can you do about that? Well, we're kind of lucky because Croatia puts a lot of resources to deter anybody from coming there right now. And I, I'm, when I say a lot of resources, I'm talking maybe like quarter million dollars a year extra, which would be really a burden to Liberland budget, budget at this stage. So we sometimes say me joke, jokingly, but in reality, it is also, you know, they, they simply, when you come to Croatia from 
uh, and, and you want to go to Liberland, you will be arrested for illegal border crossing. So please don't go to Liberland through Croatia. Always uh, you know, talk to us. We will update you on the security situation, but just go with the boat through Danube. Uh, so right now we don't have a problem because anybody that doesn't know the situation and comes there basically gets arrested by Croatia just for coming to Liberland. So we don't have any, any problem with anybody else coming there and claiming that piece of land. Okay, and a question? <laughs> Hi, thanks for a really nice idea and uh, and really nice state. I just want to ask, uh, if uh, a business wants to come into Liberland, how is it, um, how its incorporation is being uh, then perceived in European Union? I mean, business starts making money in Liberland, pays voluntary taxes, will it be additionally taxed in EU or will it be considered to be a uh, uh, non-registered, uh, mm -hmm. uh, whatever, but business conduct, How, what, do you have an experience with that? Do depends really on a country and every country has a little bit different legal setup. For example, Czech Republic and Slovakia are very specific about a third country. They don't mention if the country is recognized or not in their legal system. Uh, so basically since they don't mention it, you can assume that, that uh, this is kind of, we are a third country. Apparently, and of course, if the if the essence of your business is not based in Czech Republic, and for example, is done online, uh, there is no reason why that activity should be taxed in Czech Republic. You know, this is this is really something interesting. You know, we are kind of tied like these horses to the plastic chairs. In a way, we are thinking about these things, but uh, of course, all these company incorporations, Seychelles, Panama. Those are just co concepts, right? It's not, a, not something tangible, and those are man-made rules. Uh, so what we're doing right now, we of course want to be a place for the first DAOs uh, to be incorporated directly in some jurisdiction. That's our second goal with the DAO stack. But if you have a physical business, we've got a great opportunity for you. Uh, there is this free trade zone right opposite to, to Liberland in Serbia. And by the way, that's kind of special, right? Because EU is kind of putting down all these special economic zones, but Serbia is still not part of EU. So we can come to Liberland, you can visit Liberland, and then you can come and see the free trade zone. Only 10 kilometers away from Liberland, there is no VAT and no import export tax. I think that's a, that's a really great place to make business. Whatever you are producing physically can be actually done out of that free trade zone. And right now we are in process when Liberland, Liberlanders are trying to buy a whole uh, piece of that free trade zone, which is a separate one, uh, which includes shipyard. So if you are interested in that, I think that's a great uh, opportunity, investment opportunity, because I think when, once it, it gets to be branded as a Liberland free trade zone in Serbia, it's gonna at attract a lot of, lot of capital. Uh, hi, uh, I would like to ask, uh a similar question. Mm -hmm. Let's say that uh, there is a company in Liberland and it provides some service or product to another company based in uh, Europe, let's say Slovakia or Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, would the company in, in Europe be able to uh, deduct their taxes based on the fact that they uh, uh, got the service from Liberland, you know, like uh, to uh, yes, well, you know, the, as I'm telling you, for example, Czech and Slovakian legal system only talks about three ca third country. We know that in Malta, the Abkhazian companies uh, couldn't really push their invoices through the, Mal uh, the no, Cyprus, through the Cyprus uh, tax bureau. So it, it depends country to country, and the whole thing is a process, right? Some companies, some states recognize some companies, in, and some states don't recognize some companies from. Foreign, foreign states. We are at the beginning, but apparently, you know, there, there were cases now where, where Liberland invoice was accepted by state authorities in Poland without any problem. So we've got these first uh, precedents uh, which are happening right now. We haven't really been promoting the incorporation. You cannot go and incorporate directly from the website. We're still in, in testing mode and we are pushing 
uh, the boundaries further and further. But what I'm really excited about that the whole ecosystem is growing now that, that we've got the first insurance company that is really interested in, in launching in Liberland, that the banks are willing to cooperate with Liberland because they see a large potential in terms of e-residents actually becoming their uh, Liberland e-residents becoming their customers. So as long as we've got a good KYC, which is backed by regular documents that actually don't have problem with, with opening accounts uh, for Liberland individuals. So the whole thing is in process, and I think we're just about to launch many of these things at the beginning of next year. Thank you. Okay. So I personally appreciate that you start the cooperation with Dalstack because for me, like decentralized autonomous organization is the future. I had a presentation about DAO, so this is prob I think this is a really good move. Um, any other questions? Don't hesitate and ask. No. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the, this is Jaromir Mishkovsky. He was there on the day one of Foundation of Liberland. Uh, he's the crazy guy, but crazy enough to start with me uh, uh, such a such a state. <laughs> Yeah, especially what I personally like um, uh, about Liberland is that people start thinking that like the international law and existence of state or even virtual states, everything like, like it's very fungible, very flexible, you know, like there are no s some specific strict borders, you know, so. Well, Liberland is kind of cool because we have all the all the options to explore how much can be done in the virtual space, but we also have a nice claim to piece of land, which qualifies us uh, to mm -hmm. fulfill all the Montevideo criteria, mm -hmm. right? So it, it is kind of difficult to, to do a startup country, but maybe no longer, you know? I, I think we will see in more and more countries erupting in the crypto space. Uh, right now, I, was in, I think we are a little bit slow in, in, in attracting ICOs into Liberland, but we also have two bigger ICOs coming up next year. Mm -hmm. One of them is actually an energy company that will trade the energy tokens on the European exchange. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited about a couple of these projects. And of course, the ICO for the insurance company, I think, will be a big mm -hmm. one. Um, but uh, we will see more and more jurisdictions that will be fully defined by the DAOs that they are incorporated in. And that's something where we would like to push the boundaries as well. Okay, um, maybe a question. So if some people want to be Liberland citizen just now, can you describe shortly what he or she should do? Well, of course, if you stake 5,000 merits, that's a fast track to citizenship. But if you help us for a couple of months with anything, you know, we get involved in one particular aspect of Liberland. I mean, be it the legal system, be it how the DAO should work, or, or just come to Liberland in summer for a couple of months and help. That's also a, a very good way and fast way to get citizenship. But the e-residency will be there for everybody. It is something where you just register on the website. It takes a couple of minutes. The citizenship will be a little bit prestigious thing. We're actually thinking that since there will be only 700 million tokens, the merits, that uh, since you need to f stake 5,000 merits, oh, there will be maximum 140,000 citizens on the planet ever, uh, limited by the, by the technology. So it is a... A citizenship basically must have a value. Uh, there must. This, it's not that easy to acquire citizenship in any other country. By the way, there is a new company that just launched yesterday, LiberlandCitizenship.com, I think. But also, not, doesn't only offer Liberland citizenship. It also offers Sankits Sat Sat and Nevis and Dominica. Uh, so I'm happy that you know the ecosystem of these companies is really growing and that uh, that we are getting actually on the catalogs of other citizenship advisory film. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool that we've got now two companies that already took us among those other countries that have investments, pr investments uh, programs for citizenship by investment, for example. Anyway. Okay, I saw some question here. Okay, question. Uh, hello, uh, I would like to ask you what are, let's, uh, let's say, three biggest challenges you objectively have or you have to do? Well, I think well, there are a couple, right? And I think the biggest one is to get the systems right, because if we incorporate the DAO, uh, there is not too many ways to change it later on. 
DAO will be able to alter its own code. That's one of the basic things, but it still will be quite difficult to get things right if we get them wrong at the beginning. Uh, so defining the rules, uh, finalizing the constitution and, and set of, of basic legal codes, that's also important. And of course, the relations with Croatia. I think uh, that has the priority over everything else uh, to make as much friends with them as possible and basically to, let, to, to make them let us live, which is uh, an important, important part. Okay, another question we have. Uh, thanks. Uh, another more kind of uh, tabloid question. How do you provide security and law enforcement there? Well, the idea is that Liberland should be really focused on security, justice and diplomacy. That, that we, would, we would not like to put our nose in any other uh, area. And you know, tourism being one of them, for example, I hate uh, that we are kind of starting these things. I just wish there were more private investors that would go into it. But I think after we launch it, there will be a much more, much more private initiative. Uh, so security is number one, right? So <laughs> we've got already a couple, we actually had a couple full-time security guys. Right now, since the winter started, they are kind of on vacation. And they've got uh, water, water ski. They can make sure that nobody gets drowned in Liberland. And, uh, what we are planning to do in terms of international security is offer uh, Croatia a decent amount of money as a protection fee, uh, basically to, to leave us alone. So that's part of the strategy. But internally, we're just planning to basically have a security agency, internal security agency that will take care of, of making sure that people uh, don't hurt each other there. Another question? Okay. Oh, that was a question. Yep, there is this Liberland residency app, which basically is a kind of a pilot for Uberizing police in Liberland. So if you want to ch check it out, it's on Android, and I think it will be like a 2.0 by the end of the year. Uh, so you can see all other Liberlanders around you, and you can also kind of declare emergency and ask them for help. Uh, but I was thinking that we can actually run the, uh, the security in a much more efficient way than a traditional state through Uberizing it. Okay, um, I have a question related to the finances. So, how do you finance it all? I mean, like from like everything, like flying to Dubai and then to Somaliland and or whatever, or just. Of course, there is enough Liberlanders, uh, six hundred thousand, and uh, if every single Liberlander paid a voluntary tax of one dollar a month, which is not the case by far. You can check all the financial statements. We would not have any problems with financing a flight uh, over to Dubai. But luckily enough, we don't have a financial issues. I'm happy that we are able to pursue all the projects that, that we need at this stage. We will need to put together as a nation some decent amount of money on the table for Croatia so they can consider accepting that protection fee. I don't think we will be able to move without that forward at some stage. Oh, another two questions. Uh, hi, just short question. Is uh, Mary Token publicly traded somewhere? Not, not yet, and the whole thing actually depends on launching the DAO itself. I, I don't want to launch the token because it will be connected with the, with the voting rights and with the, with the legal system. So I don't want to launch the token before these rules are actually defined, and we are at least very close to the final definition of them. I think we are now, now some 90% done. We still need another month to launch the pilot, and after we launch the pilot, and we will see that it successfully works, we will also make the token tradable. Luckily enough, you know, there is a lot of Liberlanders that have crypto exchanges in the community, so I don't think there'll be any problem with tradability. I think the last one is Xstar from China. That's uh, like a decent size already crypto, crypto exchange. And I almost forgot one thing. There is another exchange being launched uh, out of actually our embassy in Somaliland. So there will be a first crypto exchange that will be run from a sovereign soil of Liberland. And I think that will be a lot of, uh, a lot of fun. And they've got some decent technology. It's not a decentralized exchange, it's a centralized one, and, and the key server will be placed on a recognized embassy of Liberland in Somaliland. It's kind of a symbolic thing. 
but I think it's an important one. Thanks. Thank you, Vitku, for an uh, interesting speech. I would like to ask uh, about car register because you had to talk last year in here and uh, shared some information. So if there is some actual thing about this, thank you. Yeah, the whole, the whole thing is now process of the, in process for an up update in, in terms of our IT. Uh, so there will be this simple IT system where you'll be able to manage all the registries at once, if, if it's a boat or if it's a car or if it's a property. Everything will be kind of in one, one uh, system. And uh, the, the car registry, we've got a couple cars still driving around uh, with Liberland plates. And amazingly enough, they didn't have a major issue. It's, it's uh, funnily enough, we had, I, I had personally big trouble now for putting the Liberland sticker on the Czech license plate. But the guy that drives around with Liberland license plate didn't have any, any issue, right? It's, it's kind of ridiculous, but that's the situation now in Czech Republic. So, so far, you know, you can also get a Liberland license plate, which I think is pretty cool. You can actually get a, a, a insurance for it. Uh, that has been not fully solved, so that's, I think, the major obstacle for mass adoption is that we don't, still don't have a, a, an insurance company that would work with us for longer than half of the year. So then you have to basically register it back. But as long as your car is insured uh, and has a green car, there is no problem with driving it on Liberland license plate. Okay. Another question? Okay. So uh, it seems, and I'm happy about it, that Liberland project is moving forward. So I wish you a <laughs> lot of luck. Thank yeah. you very much, Pavel. Okay. So thank you a lot for coming here. I thank you a lot also, the yeah. audience, <laughs> for your questions. I've got some souvenirs if you guys want it from Liberland. <laughs> what is it? I would love the souvenir. Please. How do we